All right, what's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here with another opposition preview. Obviously, we have got Bournemouth uh, away on Thursday night, six o'clock kickoff, under the lights. Well, I say under the lights, but it's probably not going to be under the lights. Uh, but I've got Sam with me from Back of the Nest Postcards podcast. It's a Bournemouth channel on YouTube on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. So if you want to check out some brilliant form of content, do check that out. Um, Sam, so big game on Thursday night. Probably, probably bigger for you than it is for us, to be honest. But talk to me about, about your season. You know, you've had five seasons in the Premier League now under Eddie Howe. What's gone wrong this season? Oh, mate, it's been, it's been poor this season. I think it's been one where we've been forced into playing a number of new players that maybe don't quite get the system. I mean, since we've come up from the Championship, we've always managed to phase in new players, like one or two at a time, season on season, as we phase out the old guard from the team that got us promoted from the Championship. This season, though, injuries have meant that for many of the matches this season, we've been starting with players that haven't really gelled. Um, for instance, our midfield as a whole, you've got sort of Jefferson Lerma, who has played previous seasons, but alongside Philip Billing, so a new centre midfield partnership. Harry Wilson on, on loan from Liverpool. You've got players like Arnold Dan Juma on the left wing and even Jack Stacey at right back, uh, Diego Rico that uh, until this season hadn't played much. And they've all been you know, chucked in and we've had to because of our injuries. And it's been poor. Uh, we've been hoping that we could have been that steady mid-table side again, but the performances have just not been there. And Eddie Howe's got a lot of work to do if we're going to get out of this situation. Obviously, Eddie Howe, absolute club legend down at Bournemouth. Um, do you still think he's the right man to take you forward? Yeah, I do. Um, I don't think and now's the time that we could bring in anyone else because if some people, even on Talk Sport, have been mentioning like Sam Allardyce and all those kind of names. But if we got relegated, we'd be lumbered with him for a season, and he's not exactly got um, you know promotional uh, you know credentials to his name. So we, uh, you know, I think sticking with Eddie's the best thing. He knows the club inside out. He can get the best out of players. However, they have just not been performing for him um i think it would be a um, you know too big a rebuild project if we were to get a new manager in now um he's the he's the best person we've got in order to you know give us a chance to get out of the situation we're, we're in for sure yeah but at the end of the day he has done an absolutely exceptional job at bournemouth really has um you know coming up from the championship playing football in the correct way um probably gallivanting football up and down the pitch you know i for one would prefer, much prefer you to stay in the league than West Ham, I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, moving on to the game, how do you feel coming into this game? Obviously, you're in a terrible run of form, but, you know, we're not right. on a much better run of form, to be honest. Oh, mate, 17 losses in our last 22 games. It is yeah. shocking. And this season has seen... Um, uh, Bournemouth have been famed for their almost reckless attacking brand of football, whereby we try to outscore the opposition. And, you know, we're a small club. We know that. Um, and, you know, many times we get unstuck, especially when we play the big sides. But against the sort of bottom half sides, we, we've had a lot of luck. Teams this season, though, have found us out. And... It's seen Eddie sort of deploy a more reserved style of football. We haven't shown any attacking impetus at all since Project Restart. My goodness, like the first three games were woeful. I think we we mustered about um, one one or two shots in our three matches against Man United in the last game. It was a little bit better, and we showed sparks and. You know, the 5-2 scoreline, I'm not sure if that flattered them or flattered us, but it was a match where we showed a bit more. And if we can do that against Spurs, then we have a chance. But it's one of those games where we have to have a great day and you have to have a poor day. Um, we saw it last season, but, you know, only by the fact that you went down to nine men and we managed to somehow score that last minute goal. Um, it's going to be a really tough match, but it is massive. And I think our Premier League future depends on this match alone, given the matches that Watford have got. Um, I think it's going to be a very cagey affair. I think if we do take the lead, we cannot afford to you know, sit back because we don't know how to defend. Um, our best form of defence is to attack and then score another. So um, it's going to be a very interesting match. And given Spurs' kind of recent form, I mean, the Everton performance wasn't great but you did what you need to do but in a way I think for you it's you know it's a good win 
in terms of, you know, Mourinho is going to look at that and think, well, we need to improve in certain areas. So, you know, you've got the three points on the board. Um, he can sort out you know, what went wrong and hopefully we won't see a reaction at Dean Court. But who knows, it's going to be a real tough one. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very cagey affair, like you said. I think uh, Mourinho, the way he sets up his teams, you know, quite defensive, as everyone knows, as, as you probably would have saw last night. I think our defence actually performed really well last night. But what I have to say about Bournemouth is, yeah, you said that the bottom teams kind of have found you out this season. But on the flip side, you've got results against Chelsea this season. You've got results against big teams this season. Yeah. Um, so it could go either way. Yeah, and you know what? It, it does favour us playing teams that like to attack and, you know, do leave gaps. Because when we, you know, our first match, uh, televised on BBC, you know, everyone was watching against Crystal Palace and we were woeful, but they were so well organised. And there are teams, even Norwich have been well organised against us, Sheffield United, um, teams that at the start of the season, you would expect to be down there, but Sheffield United have done amazing. But there are other teams that have known how to defend. And if there's a team that plays with a low block, you find it very difficult to break through. So we've got to vary it up. But um, your part of me thinks it's too little, too late. But we've got five games to do it. We've got yourselves, Man City away, which is basically a write-off. And other than that, three other games that... We're hoping we can get something. But um, I think, you know, quite a lot of the time it all depends on how you play. And that's not the situation that we want to be in. But that's how it is. Well, you know what? You say Man City's a right buff, but Southampton got uh, three points about against them last week. So in the Premier League, any, anything can happen, literally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a tough game. But I think what, what you got going for you in this game against us is that we got the North London derby three days after. Mm. And we're going, to have to, we're going to have to rest players against you. There's no two ways about it. This game against Arsenal is pretty much the biggest game we got left in our season. And we can't finish below them. We, re- we just can't finish <laughs> below them. We can't. Yeah. <laughs> um, so to be honest, we were asking a lot of fans that came on the fan cams last night, would you rest everyone against Bournemouth if it was to get that win against Arsenal? And everyone said yes. So, Please do. Yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> one. So, if it's a case of letting Bournemouth stay up to West Ham to go down and us to finish above Arsenal, I'm, I'm all for it. I'll tell Mate, you that. I would love you forever. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think Jose, Jose's got us defensively much better than we were under the back end of Pochettino. So, I think it's going to be an interesting game. But the one thing I want to ask you is about Ryan Fraser. Obviously, he's had massive links with Spurs. He's left Bournemouth now. Just tell me a bit about him and if, do you think he would be a success at Tottenham if he was to join us? Yeah, I think, I think he would. I don't think he's a player that would be starting week in, week out. I mean, for Bournemouth, he's shown some, uh, you know, he's been with us a number of years and showed some amazing talent. I mean, when he came from, from Aberdeen, he was a little chubby Scottish lad that didn't have a good diet. And Eddie Howe changed his ways. He got him a chef in to actually cook him proper meals, got him his like mentality right. And he, and he really managed him into the player that he became. But he had that really good season for us. And then there were the rumours, there were the sort of media speculations yourself, um, even Arsenal were interested as well, um, according to what the newspapers say anyway. And it seems from that moment, he did have his head turned a bit. And um, there were numerous things about him that, uh, I look back at it now, and it's, it's almost contrived the way he deleted his Twitter account so he can't get any feedback from the fans. He did a questionable interview on local radio whereby he said, you know, I haven't been playing for the team. And... All those little things when added up and then this contract extension that he didn't sign and then not playing those two games where he could have. Um, I wouldn't say we're pleased to see the back of him, but I don't think he did sort of, I don't think he did the squad any favours and he was almost like a bad apple. However, playing for the right team, uh, I think he could be a real good asset. He's got low centre of gravity, he's quick, he's direct, he's got a good cross on him. Season before last, I think him and Callum Wilson were killing it in the fantasy football in terms of assists Yeah, they and were. Goals. I think I had both. Yeah, um, so I think, you know, if he's playing in a good footballing side, he could be such an asset. But I think, it, you know, in his mind, he was better than Bournemouth um, and wanted to get out. And, you know, I do wish him all, you know, all the very best. Um, but, you know, when he did leave in the way he did for many Bournemouth fans, it did leave a bit of a sour taste. But I'm mm. sure he'll go on to do, um, you know, to do big things. Interesting. Um, and finally, I'm going to ask you to put your neck out the line and score prediction. Thursday. 
obviously there's this kind of head v heart thing that goes on yeah, obviously, uh, yeah. if i was putting money on it I, it wouldn't be on a bournemouth win but i've got to be optimistic and say that we can scrape something because we need to so i'm going to go for a cheeky one nil to bournemouth but one nil bournemouth who knows you know i think it's really imperative for the team to score the opening goal because i found un- under jose Mourinho. If we get the first goal, we're more than likely going to go on and win the game. But if we don't get the first goal and we go out behind, we're not going to get anything out of the game usually. Mm. So it, it all depends on that first goal, to be honest. And if we can come out the blocks firing, then, then I think we can go on and comfortably win. But if you come out and get the first goal, I, I genuinely think you're going to go on and win the game. I'd like to think so. I mean, uh, there were a couple of seasons ago where Bournemouth had the best record in the Premier League for comebacks. And if someone else uh, scored first, you know, we would come back and win the game. But this season, our ment- you know, we mentally just dip. Um, and we don't, we don't seem to you know, be able to finish off a game, even if we score first now as well. At Old Trafford, we found that. We almost scored too early in that. And they had the large uh, part of the game to you know, come back. And yeah, they certainly did. Um, so yeah, your first goal for us is massive. There's more chance of us winning the game if we score first. So yeah, I'm just hoping for a fast start. And that's something we haven't seen in a long time. The Bournemouth identity seems to have been lost a little bit. And if we carry on playing like the way we have this season, Sad to say it, the Premier League will be better off without us. Um, but I just really hope that um, we can at least turn on the style and give ourselves the best fighting chance to stay in this division. Yeah, I mean, when you say the Premier League will be better off without you, I think, I think when, when you're talking about this season, may, maybe, maybe you have a case. But I think the past four seasons, you've absolutely done yourselves the honour of being the Premier League. You've been absolutely class the last four seasons. And I think every club coming up from the Championship can look at you uh, as a model kind of thing yeah. moving forward. I think it's been absolutely sensational. But I think when you look at Bournemouth and Tottenham, I think with both clubs have, who have lost identities in the way they play their football this mm. season, especially. But like I said, I really do hope you stay up and I hope West Ham go down. So mm. I wish you the best success uh, for the remainder of the season. And um, we would do our live fan cams after the game on Thursday. So if you fancy coming on, you're more than welcome. Um, yeah. I'll send you the link in the DMs. But Absolute pleasure speaking to you, Sam. Thanks for coming on. And uh, everyone, I'll put the link in the description to his podcast and his YouTube channel, so check that out. And yeah, thanks for coming on, mate. No worries at all. See you later, mate.